<laughs> Good afternoon. Well, I'm so happy to see so many of you here. Welcome to the OpenStack Roadmap panel. And today we're going to talk about you know, what we want um, OpenStack to be further developed to meet telco's needs. And today we have prepared a, a very exciting panel for you. We have invited um, five esteemed uh, panelists here to share with us their experience with running OpenStack and what, what their dreams and hopes for for OpenStack moving forward. So first of all, I'd like to introduce all of them. Uh, my first panelist, um, Beth Cohen, she is a Secure Cloud Interconnect Product Manager from Verizon. And Beth is also an old timer at the OpenStack community. She's been a track chair for many, many years, so she probably knows a lot of you here. And uh, second panelist, we have Tobias Ford, who is the AVP of Cloud Technology Strategy and Planning from AT&T. And AT&T is also uh, our super user, and they have shared a lot with um, the OpenStack community in the past. And the third panelist, we have Mr. Ishiro Fukuda, who is the Chief Architect Infrastructure from NTT. And, and NTT has been also sharing a lot of their stories with us. And um, the fourth panelist, we have uh, Chris Donnelly, who is a Director of Innovation from Cable Labs. And also, Chris is also a board member from OpenNV. So if you have any questions about OpenNV, Chris, um, I'm sure he can answer all the questions about OpenNV as well as OpenStack. And my fifth panelist is um, Mr. Jetsuk An, who is the OpenStack architect as well as evangelist from SKT. Okay, and I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Annie Lai. I'm with um, Huawei IT Product Line Solutions. And um, uh, I've been with Huawei for three to four years. I've traveled over 30 countries visiting various telcos, talking to them about um, OpenStack and their cloud strategies. And um, I can sh assure you that at least all the first tier telcos have either deployed or looking into OpenStack. And they also have, they have acquired experience from the past um, from um, VMware as well as Amazon. And now they are looking at OpenStack because they think that OpenStack's interoperability is going to be a long-term cloud platform strategy for them. And uh, I don't want you to hear from me. I want you to hear from the users directly today. So that's why we have today's panel. And um, I have prepared some questions. And first of all, I'd like to have each one of my my panelists talk about you know what their company is doing with OpenStack and their experience in using OpenStack. Uh, would you, Beth? Would you like to start? Sure. Uh, it's on. Oh, okay, great. Um, so Verizon is is definitely moving toward OpenStack. Uh, we don't have any deployments in production yet, but that's coming. Um, and OpenStack is attractive because it's open source and uh, it has a great deal of flexibility. Um, so with that, we can't say we're super users yet. Yes, at uh, AT&T, we've been using uh, OpenStack in production since uh, January of 2012. Um, our deployments have, have evolved a lot from the beginning. Uh, we're now in the process of building out the uh, the infrastructure, the sites needed to actually make NFV real. So we are in the process of deploying many sites around North America and then a bit in in the global footprint that we have. Uh, and we've, yes, we're making great headway pushing VNFs to run on, on OpenStack. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult to say and about the entire NTD group, but as you know, see in the keynote uh, that uh, we are uh, at least like we provide public cloud services based on OpenStack, and there's a various like a, uh, we use as a service infrastructure for uh, the other entity group companies. Definitely, private cloud is the foundation for R and D. So, lots of uh, component or efforts we are consuming from the OpenStack. Uh, and Cable Labs is an R and D consortium uh, chartered with bringing innovation uh, to the cable industry. Uh, so we are using OpenStack uh, as uh, part of our, our research and development program uh, around uh, uh, network virtualization, uh, virtualization and network evolution, as we call it internally. Uh, and uh, so uh, it's a big part of OPNFV, and uh, we're using it uh, for our uh, NFV uh, infrastructure uh, to uh, bring up uh, our virtual network functions. <coughs> SKT... Um 
we used to have a public cloud and private cloud based on the vendor solutions. And we decide to go for the OpenStack this year. So we are currently deploying public and private cloud based on the OpenStack. Uh, we will open the, the, the Bera service at the end of this year. So uh, it's a, like a new start from SKT uh, using OpenStack. And in addition, um, the SKT think the 5G network uh, needs very programmable and virtualized and very flexible infrastructure. So uh, we try to build a software-defined technology and software-defined data center operational platform. And we are integrating like OpenStack Keystone as a unified uh, authentication method and looking into some neutron uh, to be used in our operational platform. So. Okay, great. Well, I'm so happy to see that there's a lot of uh, open stack uh, experiences and practices here on this panel. And um, so before we get into the roadmap, we kind of wanted to know that, you know, what you have learned from your um, experience with OpenStack, the good and the bad and the hopeful. And since I think at and is probably the longest, has the longest history on this panel with OpenStack, so Ms. Mr. Tobias, would you like to share first? And then I'd like to go through the whole panel and hear about the rest of the panel's view. Sure. So, I mean, I think the, the biggest learnings over the last three or four years of working on OpenStack is, is definitely f uh, having to focus on the, the team that, that you use to architect, to implement, and to operate, to implement DevOps with. Uh, getting the right folks involved, having the right partners is really an essential ingredient. Uh, because, um, and I was talking about this yesterday, uh, OpenStack is such that it's very easy to get overrun. You start, you set up a deployment, you get two or three setups in place, and then you have so many uh, applications and VNFs running on it, and so much demand that you really have to, to be ready to scale. And so that's, I think, probably the most uh, pertinent lesson in over time. Okay, and uh, Ishiro son? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'll go this way. Yeah, so our experience in the OpenStack is uh, OpenStack community is an evolving project, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, like each time we see lots of proposal and like keep feature upgrading. So uh, our development start from like starting from 2011 years. Uh, that like uh, still, if we look at the Neutron, it's evolving. So each time we have to be careful to which feature to be used and how far ahead we can uh, start working with the community to talk about the uh, feature, what we as a service provider need, and uh, yeah, uh, co-develop the feature with the community to deliver right on time. Sometimes it doesn't meet, but uh, we had a good idea about dealing with those uh, open source community in NTT. Okay, and Chris? Uh, what we've been finding uh, at Cable Labs is uh, how uh, OpenStack will help us accelerate our internal development. Um, we're uh, using a, a CI CD system uh, that's uh, tied in. Um, so we're using it primarily with OPNFV. And so we're tied in with the uh, Linux Foundation uh, uh, integration tools uh, and then bringing in OpenStack uh, through that door. Uh, and uh, we're now using virtual teams uh, going across the company. Uh, uh, across different departments within R&D and then also bringing in our IT support staff. Uh, and uh, we're able to uh, develop on a, a six-week cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for us, wow. that's, that's um, uh, something we could never do in the past. Um, you know, previous projects, uh, I think the fastest we were able to do was uh, about four months. Uh, and, uh, you know, beyond that, uh, we're finding that we can reuse that the same code uh, for multiple different projects. Uh, and so uh, every time we start up uh, a new effort, uh, it builds on uh, all the lessons that we learned in the past, and we can move it that much further, uh, that much faster. Wow, anything negative? <laughs> I mean, it looks like you're very happy, OpenStack user, for your internal IT, but is there any l lesson or g kind of gotcha that people should be aware of? Um, it doesn't solve the, uh, the full problem. Uh, for uh, NFV at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, we're still missing uh, uh, some pieces, uh, management and orchestration um, from a service perspective. Um, you know, layer three networking concepts uh, uh, and uh, more focus on the access network rather than in the data center. So there, there's still some work to do. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, we're happy uh, with the, the direction that things are going. Okay. Well, he kept knocking his head. It means you agree. Oh, agree with <laughs> You agree. So, would you like to share your experience, um, the good and the bad, the whole? Thing? Um, I think that the, the deploying OpenStack. Um, I'm not saying that's the easy thing, but most the diffi difficult thing is operating the OpenStack. Uh, so, when I talk to like uh, the NOC guys, the network operation center guys, they don't understand uh, cloud concept of the architecture. So, uh, I have to persuade them. Starboard guy and network guy has to put together and see this OpenStack as a one platform. On. And there's lots of operation requirement uh, from the traditional telco environment, which is not right for the, our cloud environment. So talking to the operation team and make them understand and like a, uh, prepare to some features uh, ready for the operation, that was our most difficult thing that we are going through right now. Um, um, and at SKT, as a Turco, we are not used to do uh, those agile development and CI, CD uh, stuff. But when we are uh, adapting OpenStack, automatically we uh, are accepting those DevOps concepts and development process has to be uh, in place in the SKT. So we are also working on uh, changing that uh, cultures inside company to be more uh, DevOps centric. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. uh, approach. Yeah. And Beth? Yep, so, so I'm last, but um, we're, we're probably the least far along in, in our journey into, into OpenStack. And I would say probably the biggest um, hurdle that we're running into is the cultural, you know, the need to change how you view tools. And, and you mentioned Agile. You know, you can say you're Agile, but, you know, that means something different when you're actually doing it. Uh, and, and I think that's been a real eye-opener for a lot of people in our organization. And, of course, it's a big, you know, we're a telco, which means we're a big organization, we're sprawling, and, you know, we have to deal with a bunch of different groups and how they work together. So it's been, it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it looks like we, you know, on this panel we have used OpenStack for, um, you know, private cloud for your internal IT development for public cloud and also for um, NFV. So in your opinion, which um, kind of cloud deployment is um, OpenStack is most ready for and which one is least ready for? Uh, who would like to take a stab at that? Well, I think NFV is pretty clearly the <laughs> least ready. Um, you know, sorry, layer three, that's something we really need. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, MPLS, we really need that, right? <laughs> um, and it's not going to get very far if you if you don't have those components. Um, a public, probably, it's a toss up between. Well, I'd say public, private cloud is probably the most far along because it's the one that's got the least um, sensitivity to bugs. You can kind of live with them more than, let's say, public cloud or or um, you know, full production types of things. So. Um, certainly for us, we're still definitely in test dev mode. Um, so um, it's definitely ready for that, but mm -hmm. sort of the next level. Got it. You know, those tools have to be there. They have to be robust. Has to, those, the five nines really mean something to us. Right. And Toby? So I totally agree with what Beth was saying. But uh, in addition to that, I think um, in a little bit of a different dimension, when the app is ready, uh, whether or not it's an app or a traditional IT app for public or private consumption or a VNF, when the app is built to cloud native methods, then it can work. And it can work on fairly old setups of OpenStack. We have, we have actually still versions that are quite old. I won't say how old, but very old. <laughs> and then there are, there are apps that run there that have been up and running 100% since that time. And so those apps are typically ones that are uh, that scale out, that have elements or components that are in multiple facilities across multiple uh, zones of OpenStack uh, that have distributed databases, distributed NoSQL databases, things that are uh, more toward the microservices model, more toward a, a completely automated, have full change management around them. Those types of apps work very well in OpenStack. Uh, as I said, they, they could run very well over time. But to uh, Beth's point, there's a few things we need to work on to make uh, it fully ready for VNFs. Mm -hmm. yep. 
So I agree on the from neutron perspective, open stack networking perspective, the NFB capability is not uh, 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 the, not mature yet. Uh, but uh, speaking from the uh, not talking about the open stack as a services, um, currently I'm doing uh, we are developing some software defined services using OpenStack components inside the product itself. So in that uh, perspective, to deliver the end-to-end software-defined WAN services, uh, we can use Nova, we can use Lens, Keystone, and Heat uh, if the neutron is not ready for the NFV. So there's a uh, certain module that we can consume and uh, make use of it and develop the services on top. So. It's, uh, so I think OpenStack community or component is uh, extremely providing us the modules to develop the uh, services, uh, even including NFPs. So if the community is missing some NFP features, but we can work with the vendors to have who can deliver us the SDN NFP service chaining functions at the product level. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a lots of uh, integration patterns to deliver the product to the market uh, for now. Okay, Chris? Uh, and uh, I agree with uh, what everybody else has been saying, that NFV is, is still very immature. Um, but uh, that said, the community is working on it. Uh, and it's been great uh, through OPNFV uh, to be able to work with the OpenStack community uh, and uh, make some of these improvements. Uh, and then um, I would say coalesce around uh, the need for some of these changes in future releases. Uh, we had some uh, very good meetings uh, this week on uh, uh, paths forward uh, for fixing some of the, the layer three problems or uh, uh, the management and orchestration problems that uh, yeah. that, that currently exist. And uh, so I think that we can get there. Uh, it's just going to take some time. All right. So we're very lucky to have you here um, because you you know not because you, you just because you understand OpenStack. You are also a board member at the OpenNV, and there's a lot of talks about. You know, there might be some overlaps or there might be some kind of conflict between the two organizations. Um, can you give us any advice on how OpenStack community can work with OpenNV community so we can all move towards the same direction and, you know, make progress a lot faster? Uh, sure. Um, OPNFV is a midstream community, um, th that, uh, meaning that we don't uh, own the code ourselves, that we're working with upstream communities where they exist. Um, and uh, uh, we work uh, very actively uh, with OpenStack in a number of uh, different projects here. Uh, and then Open Daylight and Onos and uh, a number of other components uh, within the, uh, the ecosystem. Um, so uh, we don't see ourselves as competing, if you will, uh, but uh, collaborating upstream, um, you know, doing the integration work between all the different components, uh, finding out where there's friction uh, and then making uh, proposed uh, solutions uh, within the upstream projects uh, to uh, uh, make that go easier. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, Jesu, okay. Well, yeah, um, I agree with all <laughs> these guys <laughs> there. Um, um, as your question, uh, private cloud, so we can have some level of control what kind of apps and processes and workload we can host. So uh, for the OpenStack to build private cloud, that, um, uh, not easy task, but relatively say that's more suitable. For the public cloud, it's not the question of the technology, it's question of the business. So the, the business guys are asking what will be a differentiate uh, service feature we can provide uh, to compete with the other public cloud in the market. So mainly that uh, tends to be focused on the network services and the security around the open stack. And I, I'm really happy to see uh, there is more network services and project in the OpenStack community, but uh, that's a still uh, just a growing project. So it's kind of very difficult to apply those, like uh, the VPN and firewall kind of service into production for the public cloud. So um, that area, I might be very interested in uh, make it faster and stable, and we are willing to contribute if it's possible. So that's. Okay, excellent. And I, I know that um, moving forward, the foundation, OpenStack Foundation is also thinking about building up this, you know, application ecosystem. And for telcos, coming up with the innovative, you know, telco digital services is very important. And telcos are also trying to virtualize uh, network functions and services. And um, 
OpenStack has incorporated Kubernetes and containers, all these things, to help developers um, develop faster and deploy faster. Do you think that's enough? Uh, or do you think your guys are still going to Amazon? Who would like to uh, take a stab at that first? Yeah, sure. Great. Thank you. So I think, yeah, so uh, OpenStack, so as a service provider, so we need to provide a life cycle and like a day-to-day -day operation. So uh, like uh, having more monitoring visibility and supporting orchestration function is critical to uh, make those OpenStack or any uh, SDN, NFV service component to orchestrate to build end-to-end uh, uh, -end services. So we'd like to see some more uh, uh, having more focusing on upside uh, to uh, evolve in this community. So that will uh, give us more, like a better, like a consumable. Right. More tools yeah. as mm -hmm. well. Yes, yep. that's definitely help. Right. Tobias? Yeah, so I'd add to that two parts. So you're talking about containers is one. You know, I think the, the work on Magnum and Cola and the other projects that have brought containers to OpenStack are good, good examples of how the innovation in the in the model of OpenStack works. It actually it does move forward. It doesn't stay limited to just a small number of things or functions, and it's able to evolve. So I think that's actually quite uh, exciting area. And then, as I was saying, kind of we've been promotive of the cloud native move, and that's an essential ingredient there, not just to be a bit more efficient than virtual machines. Uh, you know, and certainly there's a lot of work to make containers secure and such, but I think it's great the uh, the movement toward something simpler, something more transparent and easy to sort of manage. That'll help us in many, many ways. As, it, as the environments get more complex, we have to fight the, the urgency, to the urge to make it all more and more complex, and we have to clean it up and refactor. So that's that's been a good thing. Mm -hmm. On your other point about the Amazon piece, I mean, it's it's, it's always a constant threat. I mean, given the, uh, where they just recently announced this, their $7.3 billion US dollar uh, business, that's, that's pretty significant. So the scope at which uh, Amazon can solve problems is growing. And uh, <coughs> I mean, so that's, that's something we have to be mindful of and, and really be competitive with. If we're not able to be competitive, then, then people move off. So mm -hmm. it's essential for us to keep that in mind. And then also, I mean, it, when it comes to telcos, though, I think we'd all agree that still there's there's a lot to be able to do what we do when it comes to uh, access and connectivity. And often that means having facilities very close to the users. So in, in North America, between us, I think we probably have a quarter of a million buildings. And right. so that's hard for Amazon to compete with. Right. Um, I have a couple things. First of all, I think organizational readiness is pretty key. I mean, again, we're relatively young in the in the OpenStack journey, so I see it in you know very painfully at this point. Um, and I don't think OpenStack is as friendly toward companies that are just starting in that journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been involved in the OpenStack community since pretty close to the beginning. So, and it's come a long way. Good news, <laughs> come a long way. In terms of Amazon, I'm not, um, I actually work very closely with Amazon. I'm not afraid of them at all. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, you, uh, other, many people have heard me say this. Amazon's target user is three guys in a garage. <laughs> and they have an amazing lack of understanding of anything beyond the data center. Now, they're great inside the data center, but as far as they're concerned, it gets to that router, and beyond that, it's, oh, it's just magic. <laughs> well, we know on this panel, it ain't magic. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of hype about Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that too. <laughs> Who else wants to address that? Um, we're, uh, I think containers are very important. Uh, we're using them a little bit differently, I think, um, in our uh, virtual CPE uh, development. Uh, part of the architecture is to allow some of the uh, virtual network functions to live at the edge. And uh, uh, we're using uh, containers uh, to push VNFs down to the edge uh, where we're uh, um, implementing them on top of Raspberry Pis. Um, 
which are very lightweight uh, uh, CPUs. Um, and uh, I think that's a key differentiator from an Amazon that really is based on uh, data center operations. Um, so uh, um, we've had to do uh, a bit of hacking uh, to get our container strategy to work uh, for us with the, the current tools. Um, but uh, as OpenStack uh, uh, further develops uh, the container uh, projects, uh, I think that's going to help a lot uh, for uh, distributing them uh, throughout the architecture. Okay. You want to share your thoughts? Um, um, okay. Uh, for the Amazon, um, uh, uh, for the SKT, so we are telco. We have uh, benefit in understanding network and providing network in the edge side. But since Korea is a small country, uh, just one or two data centers can cover the entire country without uh, yeah, latency. And also, the, the AWS is a global uh, service. And as a telco, we tend to be the local service provider. But uh, the, the user using the cloud service, they usually require to be a global uh, cloud service. So um, in, in, in Korea, we, we are uh, trying to uh, figure out uh, what will be our uh, strength and benefit can be provided to the user as a public service provider. So that's our big challenge and question right now we have to solve. Uh, for the, the internal wise, I agree with containers. So um, amazingly, in SKT organization, we start talking about MSA. Because we just uh, start talking about uh, DevOps and uh, the CI CD, then we talk about MSA as well. So it's a very big jump. Because it's all because of the containers technology. And, and you can use the OpenStack because of the, or the project uh, related to the container uh, to provide based infrastructure uh, to uh, develop like our culture toward MSA, our applications, architecture services toward the MSA. So that's really good and beneficial for us to have this open stack, not as a just infrastructure platform, but sometimes as a like an integration engine as uh, Mark said, uh, to have lots of different of technology, but there is a central point we can have to talk with lots of different vendors and technology. That's very uh, beneficial and helpful for us. Okay. Uh, Okay, great. So just want to let you know, wow, <laughs> every time I turn around, there's more people. <laughs> so just want to let you know, the audience, you all have a chance to ask questions or you know, give us your thoughts on um, how OpenStack can help Telco and how OpenStack should be evolved in order to help Telco compete and you know, do better. So, um, so coming back, so I'll come back to you, just start thinking about those questions. And um, later, you know, we, we're going to need you to line up uh, behind the microphone so you can ask questions there. So coming back, um, I'm so glad that you know Beth said you know you're not afraid of Amazon. That is the right attitude, and um, you know. And then uh, Chris, you talk about differentiator. So I know that you know Telcos use OpenStack for you know private cloud um, you know for efficiency. So tools are very important to help you develop faster and with more agility. And then for public cloud, you know some of the telcos are in the public cloud business. Then that's where they compete against Amazon or some regions. Amazon not there or because of data sovereignty issues, they can't even get there. And then NFV, I don't even know if Amazon plays there. So yeah, probably not at all. Yeah, they never will. So, um, so from your perspective, um, how is OpenStack able to help you differentiate and compete against uh, Amazon? And if we are not ready, uh, OpenStack is not ready, what else needs to be done or needs to be further developed in order to for you guys to compete against Amazon or Google or um, Azure? I, I'm sorry, Google, Amazon, and Azure are not telcos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are not. And, and they're not getting <laughs> in the telco business anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> right. All right. Yeah, I think on your, your point about what does OpenStack need to do to be more competitive, I mean, clearly, I think the... To the, enable you to be more competitive. Yeah, I think the BT guys were very clear about this recently. There are six or seven things that they feel like are essential ingredients, and I totally agree with them. I mean, the one thing I'll focus on is upgradability um, for not just taking something and doing software upgrades, but actually making a commitment to CID, CD and helping everyone and make CICD real, I think that's probably for me the most important one because then, like uh, Andrew was saying, I mean, we can't add more functions or we have to wait if we have to wait for whole new versions of OpenStack mm -hmm. and we have to have to go that way. 
And if we don't have the right sort of CICD test framework around it, then I, I think that's going to be problematic. So uh, in the OpenStack world, we spend a lot of time on Tempest. And then in the OPNFV world, we spend a lot of time building the right test, uh, harness the test framework around the, the specifications that have been provided. And I think that's that will help to get us going in the right direction this way, mm -hmm. promoting CI/CD more universally. Okay. So I, I think customers' journey to the IT, of course, like it always packet comes into our network first before it reaches to the AWS, Amazon, or right. any other cloud. So if you look at the enterprise user, so there's lots of people in the market that uh, it is not still like a not starting uh, even start adopting the cloud services. So we can, uh, as a service provider, as we do as a today's business, we can help our enterprise customer to onboard to the cloud from starting from the network. So definitely uh, integrating NFP or like a uh, good experience uh, using OpenStack and uh, virtualization technology to change the uh, experience of the IT to the end user will be uh, yeah, the differentiator, or we can uh, wrap it around Amazon services inside the service provider, right? right? right. So, yeah, I think the journey start sh should be considered from the end to end right. experience. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I agree with the Chiro uh, that uh, the network and the proximity to the customer are key differentiators for telcos uh, as compared to uh, the over-the-top uh, cloud providers. Um, and uh, I think uh, for OpenStack, uh, the key uh, to enabling that opportunity is moving outside the data center uh, in terms of the network support. Um, really think through layer three, um, think, think through uh, uh, VPN connections, um, and it's not just VXLAN, um, we need to go further. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for the customer, it doesn't matter if it's AWS and OpenStack based cloud, it's much matter is like a service feature they really want. So I'm 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 totally agree with to Tobias. Uh, we need like a CI C D. So if we if we wanna develop a new feature based on the OpenStack, we have to be able to do that as quickly as possible in a very stable way. So I think Tobias comment is I yeah, totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Okay, so we have about like 18, uh, no, eight minutes. I'd like to open up the floor and see if there's anybody who has quest any question for our panel or if you have any kind of insight you would like to share. <laughs> brave, the brave one, I like that. So you would like to share with us that you think that how OpenStack should be further developed in order to meet telco needs. I'm going my oh, own uh, way. Okay, great. And tell okay. us what, your name and the company you work for <laughs> yes. first. My name is Greg Stigler and I work for AT&T. I'm a peer of Toby's. This okay. has not been choreographed. He may be <laughs> horrified at this point. He's so, <laughs> He's so here now. we go. The British Telecom article hit home with me. Agree with the six points like Toby does as well. Then I looked up Stackalytics. I don't see British Telecom playing. So it seems like a manifesto to me versus a community participation involvement. Now, I also want to admit something else. AT&T has had a lull in our contributions as we have developed our capabilities. And I will announce today that we are going to exponentially increase our contributions to OpenStack beginning now. What I want to ask the panel is I've heard several times up here, the community needs, the community needs to do this, the community needs to do this. What about the telcos? What's our responsibility to the community? Thank you, I will take a seat Excellent and point. listen for your answer. Excellent point, and, and I, I like to comment, um, if I can, I'm a moderator, I'm not supposed to comment, but because I work with a lot of telcos, I do ag totally agree with you. Telcos are using OpenStack, but they are not necessarily part of this community because they figure they have vendors who represent them. And I think we need to change that. Um, you know, For me, per I make it personal goal that I like to make my telco customers super users and have them come speak for themselves instead of having me talk about their use cases and we need to incorporate them because they're the ones who really know what they're looking for and so we need them if not to be a contributor but at least to be active users and then can give us feedback so I hope that anybody who is a vendor here would uh, do the same 
next. Hey, um, so Gavin Pratt from HP. And so I heard a number of you talk about containers. Oh, oh sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. OK. Hang yeah, on. actually, I've heard. Toby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toby. I would actually urge Idro to talk about his contributions because it's uh, pretty exciting what, what he's been working on. You know, generally, the, the network part of, of OpenStack, uh, you know, we've said this many times, is not sufficient to what we were looking for. And so in, recently, as I think Chris was mentioning, we're really trying to work together better now. We had a great meeting earlier this week where all the telcos sat down and talked through one particular issue. You know, I, I think we're seeing a lot more momentum. Now, some of it may be just because the Hurricane Margaret is involved in this project, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but I do want to hear uh, Itro's uh, stuff, though. I mean, it's, it's very good. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we had a very good discussion uh, this uh, early in, uh, week. Uh, yeah, so we shared a lot of what's lacking in current Neutron, what we should be done. So uh, I think uh, more and more so um, uh, we need to uh, converge to discuss about the model and the feature, what we can develop. For instance, like we, we, uh, we uh, will open source and do uh, the announced step uh, our like a source of development framework today after like 4.30 session. I will give the model driven API uh, and database kind of software development framework to model the uh, new service technology, uh, network services on top okay. um, to contribution. So we are open up to uh, discuss with you guys to uh, make service provider presence uh, into the software development. Okay, good. Uh, so before I can add a little more. So SKT is kind of new in OpenStack area. For I, I've been in OpenStack for like a, uh, from the beginning, but yes, SKT is new. But uh, like a financial and telco is two most closed industries so far. Um, but with OpenStack, it's changing. So SKT is uh, like opening our uh, SSN contribution. For example, SKT uh, is working with on us, and we decide to contribute our code base to integrate uh, between OpenStack and on us. Uh, we will contribute developers and code to the on us community so that they can have those integration between on and OpenStack. It will be the same in here, OpenStack. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are now just uh, starting, but we are willing to put our developers and really uh, uh, give a code contribution. And and it's necessary for us. I mean, um, we have to contribute first. Otherwise, we will have a silo version of OpenStack, which only mm -hmm. us to using that uh, failure uh, to use open source. So, so it's, it's changing. Uh, let me let me say. So um, I think it's a cultural shift thing. Uh, we have not contributed much to OpenStack, if anything, uh, other than me. I think I'm kind of the lonely evangelist, <laughs> and, and 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 it's really down to the company doesn't really understand the whole concept. It's 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 a new it's a it's a paradigm shift, and it will get there. We will be contributing at some point, <laughs> but you know, but we have to get there. Right. Okay, excellent. And, so and I'm sure, sure AT&T took a while to get there, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And, and we're in the process. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, Chris, we're, I'm sorry. We're still in the process of uh, ramping up our resources. Um, Cable Labs is a small company. Um, we have uh, 200 people total, 100 in R&D. Uh, and uh, uh, so we have to be very focused. Um, we are going in uh, mostly through OPNFV uh, to work uh, with OpenStack, with Open Daylight, uh, with the rest of the community. Um, and uh, currently, we are leading uh, one project uh, in OPNFE uh, and two in Open Daylight, uh, plus contributing additional test resources uh, and then participating, uh, you know, as we can uh, directly with OpenStack uh, at summits like these. Okay. All right. So I think I only have two more minutes left, so we can only take one question. That's it. I'm so sorry. And so I just want to, before we get to that, I just want to kind of put the word out there. We're going to have another panel who is going to be hosted by Beth. And it's going to be the opposite. It's, he's gonna, she's going to put out all the, uh, the vendors talking about NFV. So, so yeah, stick around. Um, okay. Um, for a warn. It's going to be more exciting than this, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, next. Um, so Gavin Pratt uh, from a vendor, HP. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have a question about containers. So I, I heard a number of you mention them in passing. And I've, especially when I talk to the telcos, I hear a 
big mix of scenarios under which they want to use containers. And it'd be useful for vendors like us to, if, if I could just get like a quick, almost like vote down the panel, which of you want to do just containers versus some kind of management technology like a Kubernetes or Mesos on top versus ones that want to do a full pass like a Cloud Foundry managing those containers. And then, I mean, if we had time, I'm curious, when, when I hear that more basic container scenario, a lot of telcos, they, they start going down that path and they decide they want bare metal instead. Mm -hmm. And so if you had time to weigh in, almost on like a yes, no basis for each of you, I'm, yeah. Yeah, it's still up in the air. I think That's we've my tried concern. them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're just at the beginning, really, of yeah. figuring things out that way. And we're pushing on the VNF vendors, so you should, should see, I did a demo yesterday with Ericsson and the AppSera folks on one component, like the one piece of the IMS system, uh, but there's a long way to go before we could get to a pro production grade VNF uh, with containers. Well, I'm sorry, before you, so there's, I mean, when you say it's up in the air, are you, are you literally considering everything from just a Docker container all the way up to a Cloud Foundry orchestrating all of it, or? Yeah, well, I mean, you, I feel like. Is anything the, out of bounds, the, or? Beyond the basic part of it, there is more, there, you need more of the orchestration piece to make yep. it work, right? And the Kubernetes Mesos work is very exciting, very yep. promotive of the, the stuff that we've done so far. But then the next layer up, and I think that you'll see this, I don't know what it is, but in the last two, three weeks, we've heard a lot of discussion about service orchestration and a lot about Mano yep. and the, the part of Etsy that <coughs> relates to management uh, above, above what, a, what OpenStack or Vim would do. And that, I think you're gonna see a lot more talk, a lot more collaboration and cooperation about how uh, we do Mano. So con container is very interesting, but it depends on like where we fit, like it's just using a Docker container or like having Kubernetes, Mesos uh, to uh, like uh, manage those containers. So uh, it depends on the where the use cases are and we always like a pick and choose the right and try to make it simple as um, uh, as much as possible. So, okay. right. Uh, we don't see a, a pure play uh, for containers. Um, uh, we're looking at uh, VMs, containers, and bare metal in the data center, and then either containers or bare metal at the edge. Uh, and um, you know, like the other panelists, uh, we need a, a common management platform uh, for all of those uh, different scenarios. So it needs. Uh, uh, significant flexibility uh, as we go forward. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for the, the, for the de developers internally, we, uh, we are starting providing paths because they don't need to be aware of the containers, but this app isolation. So uh, we use paths and we, we are testing out. And second, as an infrastructure uh, layer, we are uh, going to uh, focus on the container and orchestration layer altogether. Okay. All right, with that, we have reached the end of our session. And please put our hands together and give our panel a great applause. OK, stick around for NFV Bake Off. Thank you so much.